Hey there, everybody, welcome back. It's Enigmatic Entertainment back again with another video. And yeah, you know the drill. It's another album review Wednesday. So, what album do you think I'm doing this time? Yeah, that's right. Kid Cuddy, Man of the Moon 3. Yo, let's get it. This is, of course, the long awaited sequel to Man of the Moon 2, released in 2010. And this is a follow up to Passion Pain and Demon Slaying, his most recent solo studio album which was released in 2016 and just like those albums this one is also broken up to acts four to be exact act one track one beautiful trip and act one is return to madness this is the introduction to the album and once again starts off with that same four bell ring kind of melody that starts off the first two man of the moon albums it's an instrumental track under a minute long only like 37 seconds really starts thing off pretty nostalgic and he has some humming in there of course to make it even more classic the next track course track two tequila shots this begins with narration that's reminiscent of common from man of the moon one when he narrated that album for cuddy here, Cuddy speaks heavily on the chorus about, you know, this internal struggle within him and makes reference to some of his previous albums as well, you know, as mentioning, you know, being here before, which can be interpreted as him being used to the feeling he gets and dealing with internal issues, as well as a reference to this being his third Man in the Moon album. The eerie, high-pitched sounding melody is mixed with some trap sounding drums and fits Cuddy's vaguely melancholy sounding chorus. Perhaps he's gotten drunk off the tequila shots from the title and he's deep in contemplation, you know, just in thought, thinking, you know, is, is this internal conflict in me is rough, you know what I'm saying? Next up is track three, Another Day. This has Cuddy, you know, really talking about feeling the same you know and he references drinking and partying basically another typical day for kid cuddy same guy same pain not much of a change is the idea that's the premise plenty of good old kid cuddy hums too as well as references the previous songs as well from other albums and there's not much else to it. it's another day another dollar another kid cuddy it's another day this you know what i mean it's kind of repetitive to say the least not one of my favorite tracks on there but it is okay Next up is track four, She Knows This. This song is, you know, all about women, Kid Cudi partying with chicks, smoking weed, chilling and having fun and all that. You know what I'm saying? It's a continuation of this party theme that the first act really has for it. You know, alcohol, weed, parties, women, sex, drugs, all that good stuff, so on and so forth. If nothing else, he's staying consistent and on topic for this act, which I do like to see. There's an overall theme and it makes sense when you listen to it as a whole. This is also more of the trap sounding bass and flow that is a very different sound for Cuddy. Not like the first two Man of the Moon albums at all. So it's nice to see once again that he's branching out, even if I'm not a particular fan of it. Next up is track five dive it's the closing song of the first act and continues on once again with the party theme plenty of once again alcohol women and partying that is a lot of what you will hear on this first act i'm sure it sounds redundant at this point but this act is done now so you know it is what it is this is easily one of my favorite songs on the album as well. It's quite catchy with the production and Kid Cudi's flows. I love it. My only problem with it probably would be the fact that it's just a little bit too short. It's one of the shortest tracks on the album and I don't like that. I wish it was longer. They could have done more with it. Add another verse or something like that. You know what I mean? But hey, Act 1 is done and now starts Act 2. Act 2 is The Rager, The Menace. And this track is Damaged. This has Cuddy using Travis Scott ad-libs, auto-tune, and rapping about living the fast life. Literally speeding on the highway doing 110 miles per hour is mentioned at one point in this song. He talks about living reckless, wild and Cuddy's young, which is another reference to Man of the Moon 2. And, you know, shrugging off the haters once again, you know, like he's done in most of his previous albums. Screw the haters. I feel you. I'm right there with you. I can't stand these haters. They get on my nerves. They really do, Cuddy. They really do. The chorus wraps it up. 
you know, explaining that, you know, this is just how it is for a man that's damaged. It's just how it goes, you know? And I can relate to that. Given the title of the act, it does make sense to be talking more about reckless activity and whatnot as it seems Cuddy is back into his rager form, possibly. Or fighting the old habits again, which came with the, you, you know, he mentioned it, the cocaine addiction, so on and so forth. Not going to go into detail. It's in those albums. Go check it out if you want to know more. Next up is Heaven on Earth. This has Cuddy getting a little bit, better, a little bit more back to the rapping like normal, which is cool and I like. He does it on this track, and I want to see him do a little bit more on the album, just straight rapping, not overusing auto-tune and all that good stuff. A whole lot of ad-libs, though, sounding like Travis Scott or Migos, really. Um, now, I know I'm sure a lot of people have been comparing him to Travis Scott lately, and I'm not a Travis Scott fan. I don't really listen to him like that. There's a few tracks of him that I know and I can find enjoyable or catchy or whatnot. I'm not completely out of the loop or anything like that. And I know that this is just a comparison that people are going to make. That's just the truth. Let's be honest. We can be objective. Now, don't get me wrong. I do also recognize and acknowledge and realize that Travis Scott was influenced by Kid Cudi. Don't get it twisted or anything like that. I'm not trying to say Kid Cudi is like ripping off Travis Scott. Not in the freaking slightest. Like, let's not even go there. So get that thought out of your heads if it was there. I know that Travis Scott was influenced by Kid Cudi. All I'm saying is that it seems like the influence has gone both ways. And as we know, they have collaborated on multiple tracks already at this point. Travis Scott was on Kid Cudi's previous album, Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying. And they allegedly have an album coming out soon, as well as a track that they released earlier this year called The Scots. So... I almost expect Travis Scott to be on this album as a feature, and this is the song that I would expect him on because it sounds like his ad-libs. I, I kind of question if it is Travis Scott ad-libs, then that makes even all the more sense to what I've been hearing. It's not a bad track, and it seems to be one of the fan favorites. So, hey, you know, I think he also did a video for this as well. I haven't checked it out yet, but I'm going to check that out next, actually. Um, next up is Show Out which is one of the standout tracks for me, another favorite of mine. I love this track. It features Skepta and Pop Smoke. Apparently, this was originally Pop Smoke's song, which it definitely sounds like. He does this extremely catchy and drill-inspired chorus um, while Skepta does the first verse. And he does his thing on the verse. I can't lie. I like Skepta's verse as well. I like Pop Smoke's, Pop Smoke's chorus. I like um, the production. Cuddy comes in on the bridge and his second verse. Doesn't really sound like he fits too well on the song, honestly. It's not something I would expect from him, but he still manages to pull it off and still making an overall good track. Um, he's always been experimental in his music, though, so I'm not shocked or anything like that that he would do something like this. Um... And it's still one of my favorite tracks. It bangs really hard. I could play this in the car right now when it just whew, show out. Shh, ooh, just, just, just drive down the highway and bump this song. I want to hear people playing this song like right now. You feel me? One of my favorites, but I a doubt. I, I can't. But I'm leaving it at that. Just go listen to it if you haven't heard it yet. And you're going to figure out what I'm saying. Next up is Mr. Solo Dolo Part 3. This is, of course, the third of the Solo Dolo series. And, of course, goes along the concept or the theme, rather, of loneliness. And if you go based on part one, having no features, part two has Kendrick Lamar. You might think that part three would have two rappers. But, no, it's just Cuddy Solo. And I'm not, like, disappointed. I'm just, just messing around, honestly. But it still fits because this is a song about loneliness. So it makes sense for him to be back solo you know he talks about drinking sing uh he sings rather about drinking loneliness darkness things of that nature the usual topics and it's overproduction that is quite fitting given the the theme of the song it makes you want to go on a long drive by yourself S similar to show out except show out you'd be blasting it bumping it banging it down the highway and all that this song is more for a contemplative you know for thinking and things of that nature um you know, and contemplate life and just be depressed, you know, also known as like a typical day for, for me. And um, the hook is catchy, makes you want to sing along with it, despite it's quite melancholy feel. 
Cuddy speaks to the Lord as well as mentioning the devil in this track, perhaps speaking more of the speaking more to the inner conflict that he has and the suffering he's gone through and seeking help from a higher power, despite the fact that he does say that he needs no one. This also is the finisher of Act 2. Now we start Act 3, Heart of Rose Gold, with the song Sad People. Clearly, this is a song for the sad people out there, which is just what I need to cut. I am a very sad person. That's the truth. The chorus literally says, this is for sad people. It's, it's, it's blatantly in there. It's what he says, like, dang near verbatim. So this is not my interpretation or anything like that for, for this line. Um, more loneliness, fighting against the inner struggles, the inner demons, the inner turmoil he has, as well as the, the pain. This is back to more the more relatable songs for me, which I do like. I would have liked maybe a different production for this song. Um, and I do feel that way about a few of the songs on this album already. I can definitely feel the track, though, like I said, because of the subject matter. Even if I don't really like the production like that, I understand the track because I can relate to the whole sad people concept. Next up is Elsie's Baby Boy. Um, flashback in parentheses. This continues the stretch of relatable songs with loneliness and depression and, you know, things of that nature as the subject matter. It's very relatable. Um, and the kind of music that I really like to listen to Cuddy for. Elsa is Elsie. I believe the name is Elsie. Hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, is Kid Cuddy's mother, as you can assume. This is another standout track and another favorite for me. It features a sample of the House of the Rising Sun by the group Rising Farm. And this is one of those songs I feel like has to grow on you, really. He's not rapping at all, but it has one of those catchy choruses you just want to sing along with. It quickly became one of my favorite songs on the album after listening to it a few times and really letting it sink in. On first listen, I wasn't really feeling it like that, admittedly, but I definitely do like it more now. And he talks about, you know... Once again, his father passing when he was a child, which he does typically reference at least once on his albums. He mentions like his pet dribble dying as a kid um, and being the youngest of four kids, hence the baby boy in the title. Next up is September 16th. This is a love song apparently dedicated to his girlfriend at the time, whose birthday is September 16th. Makes sense. I understand it. Truly, it's a beautiful song about searching for your love and finding the one that's going to be there for you. It's one of the most heartfelt, emotional, and vulnerable songs on the album along with the rest of this act. Once again, this is more along the lines of what I like from this album compared to some other earlier tracks like I mentioned in Act 1 where it got a little bit too redundant and repetitive because that's not really my my style, my my type of um, premise or my like what I relate to. This is easily a favorite song and I don't see how people can say it's not a standout, especially if you have someone that you love like that or you're looking for someone that you love like that. It is truly a song that is so beautiful. I can't remember how many times I listened to it already just while like freaking writing this review like I freaking love it but I can't dwell on that because I will start to tear up <sighs> next is The Void this is an interesting song as like during a twitch stream that Dot the Genius was hosting um, I was in it for a little while I did miss some of it as I was actually working on this review at the time ironically enough um it also featured some other producers from the album, as well as Kid Cudi making an appearance for a brief period of time, which was, was really great to see. Honestly, I, I freaking loved it. I would like for him to do it again, to have everybody there. Like, it was just, it's just, it's just freaking, it's freaking awesome. I don't know what else to say about it, you know. Um, you know, it, it was mentioned, actually, that this song, or the beaten chorus, at least, is actually from the Indicud album recording sessions. Interesting enough, though, this doesn't necessarily sound like something I would place on Indica, which is maybe why he saved it for this album. It makes, it makes sense to me. Um, this void that Cuddy speaks of in the song is a place for him to be safe and away from things that would bring him down and hurt him. I definitely, once again, relate to this feeling quite well because at times I feel the same way, especially quite often as of late, wanting to get away 
um, and not deal with the negativity and pain, as unrealistic as it might be at times to be able to get away and shut yourself in or away from others. It has a captivating chorus and spacey sounding beat. This song truly has you feeling like you are in this void that he speaks of, and it is amazing. Definitely a good track. Check it out if you haven't already. Highly recommended. Next up is Lovin' Me. This features singer Phoebe Bridgers. Hopefully I am pronouncing that correctly. I've never heard of her before, but she does a pretty dang good job. And this is one of the more positive tracks on the album compared to some of the other songs. Here, Cuddy sings about self-love and getting over your self-doubt. Phoebe Bridgers comes on smoothly in this track as well. This is another one that is just purely singing. There's no rapping or anything like that. And compare this to the earlier song, like Heaven on Earth. And this is just another example of Cuddy's range as a musical artist, both vocally and production-wise. This finishes up Act 3, and this is probably my favorite act as a whole. The title of the act being Rose Golden, referring to the song from Passion Pain and Demon Slaying that features Willow Smith, where they sing about confidence and being the chosen one. Once again, this is also about self-confidence and things of that nature, which then relates back to the subtitle of this album though, which is The Chosen, which is also his Twitter handle. And do you see how it all comes together and it relates? It's freaking awesome. I like it. One of my favorite tracks as well. I can't see like, I didn't, might not have liked it first listen, just like that earlier track. But after a few listens, it definitely rubbed off on me. And I definitely can appreciate it for what it is. Next up is The Pale Moonlight, which starts Act 4, Powers. He kicks it off with some more rapping here. I also like to hear this from Cuddy, of course. It's very fast-paced, rapid, you know, perhaps fitting with the start of an act called Powers. Cuddy is powering up. He's going super sane, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, shown by all the hums in the background and faster, more confident rapping with a smooth flow on the beat. Maybe the title of the song is even a reference to Alive from Man on the Moon 1 which heavily implied him turning into a werewolf at the nighttime. Werewolves are said to transform by the moonlight, typically, I believe. So once again, Pale Moonlight, Alive, Man of the Moon 1, Man of the Moon 3, it's all freaking coming together. Maybe I'm just drawing freaking just, I don't know. It, it, I'm interpreting it, and this is how I see it. Um, this is not one of my favorite tracks on the album, really, despite the fact that I kind of can see the positives about it. Mostly, though, due to the production more than anything else, it's not really Cuddy's rapping that I have a problem with or anything like that. The chorus, once again, even is very relatable as Cuddy talks about, you know, hating what he used to see in the mirror and healing from the damage done, possibly from the uh, addictions that he's gone through and breaks, breakups and other inner turmoil that he's dealt with. Um, and also speaks on dealing with more issues in his life and, you know, basically coming to terms with the fact that there's always going to be some kind of problem no matter what it is. And, you know, as far as the mirror thing, that's something that we can all relate to a lot, I'm sure. And maybe we don't look at ourselves as positive that much. You know, I used to look at the mirror and not like what I see either when I was younger. And I had to get past that and grow up past it to be a stronger person overall. And I understand that. I can truly appreciate this track. Once again, it's not one of my favorites, but I understand. I, I truly understand, Cuddy. The next track is Rockstar Nights. This features Trippy Red on the first verse and the chorus, and he does a pretty dang good job with his melodies. I really don't listen to Trippy Red, but um, there's a song or two of his that I, I do enjoy. I just never really gave much of a listen outside of that. Um, you, can, you can't help but find yourself singing along to that rock star life that Trippy sings about living. In his verse, he makes a vague mention to people that you love being the ones that talk to the feds, which could possibly be a reference to Takashi 69 as they did used to be friends and make music together and things of that nature, which is how I even learned of Takashi 69 really is through Trippy Red's song, I believe. Um, but either way, his verse wasn't bad, and he definitely added on to the song in a good way. Not a favorite track of mine, but I can see myself going back to this song sometimes, and I definitely see now how these two could fit on a song together. They're both rock stars living that life, making somewhat alternative, um, more emotional sounding hip hop and 
hey, what's wrong with that, you know? Next up is For the Kids, which is yet again another song that is a favorite of mine. And obviously, as the title says, this is dedicated to the kids. Similar to Reef, Vev, Reef, Revo Vev, <laughs> however you pronounce it, you know, from Man of the Moon 2, where, you know, he professed to being our big brother to, to all of us listeners. This is a song that's pretty dang awesome. His verse here even starts off with, like, do it all for the kitties. And then he shouts out, like, all the young listeners, the little homies and whatnot. This is a song I can vibe to. I really feel it. We might be much older than we were when we first listened to Mandarin Moon 1 and 2. It's been um, 11 and 10 years, respectively. Um, but I suppose we're all still those kids deep down inside. And there's even a whole new group of kids now that need Kid Cudi's music probably more than ever. The chorus and the bridge reassures us that even though we feel lonely, we have each other. The Cuddy family. You guys are freaking great. We're great. The music's great. Vibe to it. You know what I'm saying? It's a good song. Last but not least is Lord I Know. The last song in Act 4 and the album Closer. Another track with Cuddy just rapping, which seems to be in line with the rest of the act. You know, he's been rapping for most of this. Cuddy has been flowing pretty heavily, which I do enjoy. The production on here is quite good too, kind of simplistic, not overpowering him like some of the other uh, beats seems to have. And this is definitely one of the beats I like on here more than some of the others. It switches up the, for the chorus to something a little bit more ethereal sounding with Cuddy's vocals echoing as if to truly draw the point home of the warrior's fight that he's had, that he mentions in the chorus. And throughout the album and the previous ones that he's mentioned, struggles, struggles, struggles. It's quite cinematic and closes out the album pretty sweetly, ending the song with a musical breakdown for over a minute or so, followed by one simple line by his daughter, Vada. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Is it Vada or is it Veda? I think it's Vada, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. She says, though, to be continued. <laughs> what better way to do it? Man, he had his daughter end off the album and teases for what? Man on the Moon 4. Oh, yeah, that's right, guys. He already teased Man on the Moon 4. Um, hey, <laughs> what can I say? Overall, I think this is an album that I enjoyed a little bit more as I listened to it for the review in particular. And I will continue to listen to it even more as I tend to do with Kid Cudi albums, of course. This is a good follow-up to the Man of the Moon series as well as Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying, his most recent solo studio album. Feature-wise, there's not many, and the few that there were were pretty good, you know. I didn't expect any of them, really. They were all a surprise to me. Um... And I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised, which is pretty nice to see, or hear. Production-wise, he had a variety of producers on here, mainly the usual ones from Man of the Moon 1 and 2, like Dot the Genius, Plain Pat, and e -Mile, the typical crew, from back in the Kid Named Cuddy mixtape days, actually. As well as a few new ones that I haven't really heard of, but still, I think, you know, did their thing. Subject matter-wise, more of the typical... You know, Cuddy never really lyrically does amaze me with, you know, his lyricism or anything like that um, or his concepts. But it is the relatability, consistency, honesty, as well as his flow, delivery, and of course, the hums that truly draw me in, as well as most listeners, I'm sure. Another good addition to the Man of the Moon series and discography as a whole, as far as I'm concerned. I'd have picked some different beats, maybe, maybe, for a few songs, or have removed like a song or two from the album that I just didn't really like, as it was a bit long, also, as most of his albums tend to be. Um, but besides that, not much that I would like to see, besides maybe more rap features, especially King Chip, aka Chip the Ripper, Where Have You Been? He was on Man of the Moon, I think, 1, 2, and a kid named Cuddy, and In the Cut, also. So I don't know where he's been lately. I would also like to see some various, you know, literary components here like um you know more storytelling metaphors punchlines but but who am i kidding that's not what we go to kid cuddy for and that's just fine we have other artists for other things to each his own good job cuddy 
You did it again. Man of the Moon 3. Whew. It's pretty dang good so far. I'm going to listen to it some more later on and see how I like it even more. It seems like it's growing on me, and I like that. So, looking forward to the next album, of course, as always, and I will be here, as always, to review it. And, of course, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more. I've been reviewing all of his albums, really, leading up to this moment. And, in fact, it seemed like I finished right on time. You know what I mean? Um, hey, Idiomatic Entertainment, Idiomatic Reviews, Kid Cudi, Man on the Moon 3, The Chosen. <laughs> this was up. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Remember to share as well. And of course, follow the channel on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow the tit. You know the drill. You know the deal. And of course, relevant links in the description box below, as well as my top five. And, you know, anything else that you might need to know. And of course, leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions or comments about this album or any other Man of the Moon albums or any other Kid Cudi albums in general, Kid Cudi songs. Or if you just have an album review suggestion for me, leave that in the comment section below and you know that I'm going to check it out and see what's up. And if you have an album that you want me to review, of course, if you don't leave it in the comment section here, then of course you're also able to reach out to me on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter as well. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. This was another good album. I'm glad we got a chance to listen to it together. To the Discord people, I hope you guys enjoy it as well. And... I'll be seeing you guys, of course. And to everyone else, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Spread love. Stay positive. Let's keep on pushing. Let's get through this. You know what it is. It's Intermatic Entertainment. I'm out.